Now, here in the UK, the government's ordered an urgent review into the circumstances surrounding the escape from custody of a terror suspect in South London. Daniel Khalif is still on the run after clinging to the underside of a food delivery van, leaving Wandsworth Prison yesterday. The 21-year-old was awaiting trial, accused of leaving fake bombs at a military base while serving in the army. The border force ports and airports are all on high alert, as Graham Satchel reports. It looked like business as usual at Wandsworth today, prison vans coming and going. But the jail is now at the centre of a growing storm, with serious questions about how a terror suspect managed to escape. Daniel Khalif was working in the kitchen. He broke out by strapping himself to the underside of a food delivery van. In the House of Commons, the Justice Secretary announced a series of reviews to answer some basic questions. Who was on duty that morning? In what roles? Ranging from the kitchen to the prison gate, what protocols were in place? Were they followed? There are more questions. Why was a terror suspect being held at a Category B prison? What kind of checks were there on the vehicles coming in and out? You'd expect a mirror to be run under the van on, on its way out in the same way as there's a dome above where you can look down to see if anyone's on top of the van. Now, why did that fail? Daniel Khalif is a former soldier. He joined the army in 2019. Three years later, he became the subject of a counter-terrorism investigation. He's accused of planting fake bombs at the barracks in Stafford, where he was based, and was arrested in January. He's been charged with preparing an act of terrorism and collecting information useful to a hostile state, now understood to be Iran. Yesterday's escape has drawn attention to wider problems in the prison system. Overcrowding, understaffing... The Prison Officers Association has blamed the government for what it calls the decimation of the service. I was made aware that there were significant staff shortages, so I looked about investigating this and actually discovered that in December last year, only seven members of staff turned up for a night shift to look after 1,500 inmates. Daniel Khalif has been on the run for more than 24 hours. Police are urging anyone who sees him to call 999. Graeme Satchel, BBC News. Well, we can now go live to the BBC's Mark LaBelle, who is outside Wandsworth Prison in South London. As Graham touched on in his report, we have a bit more information about Mr Khalif, who's been charged with collecting information which might be useful to an enemy. What more do you know? That's right. That's one of the um, three charges that's going to be put to him if he's caught and put on trial. The date was due for 13th of November. And it's trying to gather information for an enemy, and that enemy has been revealed as Iran. Uh, and uh, it is one of a number of charges. He's also uh, accused of uh, planting fake bombs uh, in a military base. Don't forget, he was a serving member uh, of the British Army from 2019 and was discharged uh, um, uh, once he was held uh, for these charges, although he pleads not guilty to all of these charges. Um, but nonetheless, that is uh, if and when he is caught. The British Justice Secretary is confident and said so twice in his statement that he will be caught. But what an escape from the underside uh, of a van uh, that w for which strapping, we now know, was found under the van once it was checked after it had left this building behind me at 7.30 yesterday, Wednesday morning, once the police had got involved and searched it. A detective would, will no doubt be uh, looking around to find out uh, if there's any CCTV footage, not just from around uh, uh, the prison here, but from the surrounding area, uh, to show when, or that moment perhaps, when uh, uh, the prison suspect, the prison, uh, prisoner who escaped was changing from the uniform that he was wearing, Regini, which would have been very noticeable with the red and white check trousers that he was wearing. Uh, there are no sightings that they've reported to us yet, and we're likely to hear from the police if they need more help from the public. The first appeal came nearly 24 hours ago, and they're still sticking with their line that they think that the suspect probably, probably remains in the London area. Nonetheless, Police forces from around the country have been asked to cooperate and the border points at uh, any point accessing uh, another country from this country has been brought in as well. And there are already, uh, we're seeing uh, traffic jams and hold-ups around the port of Dover, seen on the M20 motorway because of the disruption there, because of these enhanced security checks. 
And I think we can bring you some of the live pictures there. Oh, no, they've just gone. We were going to bring you some live pictures of the M20, um, which is a stretch of the motorway, which has been closed to um, allow for security checks for the hunt or in the hunt for Daniel Khalif. But um, let's put the hunt to one side. And the questions now, which are also being asked about how what happened behind you could have happened in the first place. And Mark, we had someone on from the Prison Officers Association saying that prisons like Wandsworth are severely understaffed and underfunded. And that was one of the big problems that they believe contributed to what's happened. Indeed, they said cuts have consequences. Um, no doubt uh, the activities of the prison officers, who we do understand were manning uh, the gates behind me, you know, there was security there meant to be stopping and searching those vehicles coming or out will be under the microscope too. But because of the high profile nature of this farcical escape, this has become a huge political issue in the UK now with people looking at uh, an investigation from the government into how on earth the escape took place and why this high-risk prisoner who wasn't given bail, don't forget, so was presumably considered a, pl a flight risk, was held in a category B prison, a lower security prison than he could have been held in. So there are all of these questions. There will be an independent inquiry. Uh, it's been announced as well. There'll be preliminary findings of those other two investigations by the end of the week. But we've heard from countless people who have worked behind those uh, four walls behind me, former prison officers this morning and former prisoners themselves, who talk about really dreadful tough conditions and we've heard from opposition politicians here in the UK that uh, you know seven security cards were on uh, on duty one night when there were about 1500 prisoners when she checked uh, last year so many big questions that need to be asked as a result of this escape. Mark LaBelle at Wandsworth Prison for the moment thank you very much.